Hey, thank y'all for dropping by camp. And today, we are using my favorite kitchen utensil, the post hole digger. What's it for? We're gonna do a little burying of some short ribs in the ground in a Dutch oven. Oh my gosh, don't get no better than this. Go to your local hardware store and put these in your kitchen. Well, welcome back to Wyoming. We are here at the Lazy Tea Ranch, and what are we talking about today? Beef short ribs. Mm, one of my most favorite meals, but we're gonna braise them really the old traditional way like they was cooked so many years ago, but you'd probably do this in a skillet, and then you'd put them in a crock pot or put them in an oven, but I have looked all around camp and all over 80,000 acres, and I have not found an oven that had a knob on it yet. So we're gonna do it like I used to do on a ranch when I really needed a slow cook, something that's gonna make something really tender and that is put it all in a Dutch oven, dig you a hole in the ground, coals underneath, coals on top, cover it up, let it cook two and a half to three hours, and woo, gonna fall off the bone with goodness it is. And don't forget, if you hadn't seen all our videos up here in the Wyoming series, check out the playlist because you don't want to be left out. Now, beef short ribs, whew, they need to be cooked down because look, look at the thickness here. And that's what you're after when you're looking for a good beef short rib, is find you a lot of meat. And if you need to trim some of these, you can. These are covered pretty well just right, because that fat's gonna render down in this cooking process and all them juices are gonna blend together. And oh my gosh, it is gonna be so good. But this recipe and this method really doesn't just pertain to short ribs. A lot of times on a ranch after I'd get cowboys gone after breakfast and I'd think, today we're just gonna have an old fashioned pot roast. So I would just do the same method Put it in a Dutch oven, let it cook. It's gonna break all of it down, get it really tender to where everything falls off the bone, and that's what we're after. But we need to season these up before we start. And I just like to use our original, and we'll coat them pretty good, we will. Just make sure that you get everything covered. All four, six, eight sides, whatever it's got, make sure it gets some on there. Butter and olive oil. Short ribs have been seasoned. Hear that sound? That's the sound I want to hear. We're going to do two at a time in here because I want to get that good golden brown crust to them. When you're browning these short ribs or even a chuck roast or whatever you're going to bury to cook, you want to go about two to three minutes aside to get that really good golden brown crust to the outside of it. Seared up really well. And when you're searing something, really, you're making that good golden crust, but you're holding a lot of that flavor in there. We want that fat to render down slowly as it cooks. Make sure you brown top, bottom, every side you got. This is a little hot right here, so we're gonna actually hope to scoot it right here, because I don't wanna burn that garlic when it gets in there, so we're gonna let that cool just a minute. We have some garlic cloves, white onion, and some thyme. You're gonna cook this for about a minute over low heat. That's all it's gonna be. We're just trying to get that flavor really locked in there real quick. I like to add a little rotel. And if you can't get Rotel and it says that brand, you can see it where it just says diced green chilies and tomatoes. About four ounces of tomato sauce, two of them chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, two cups of beef broth. And as Justin Wilson would say, if it's good enough to drink, it's good enough to cook with. You need to use a red wine when you're using this. This is a Merlot, uh, really gonna bring about that flavor it sits in there. It's got a little acid in it, so it's gonna help break down that meat as it's cooking. But you wanna be real careful and not use too much at one time because you gotta make sure everybody will fit back in your boat. We just want that meat to be submerged so that's gonna get us pretty close as that cooks down. We've got our hole there ready, but we ain't got no coals in it. But while we're waiting on them coals to take place and get in that hole we dug, just set her right back over here and just let her go to simmer. That is what we call getting the pot hot before it goes in the hole.
you take your post hole digger, make sure when you get deep enough, set your oven in there because we gotta have room for this many coals on the bottom and this many coals on top. But you could just put the lid on this Dutch oven and hey, maybe you'd be all right. But when you're coming out of there, if that lid rocks or hangs or anything else, guess what just fell in there? Coals, ash, dirt. So I always like to seal them first. And look at this. I want you viewers to tell me if you just started watching, what state are we in? We are not in Oklahoma. I'm telling you because it would be doing this. The wind would be blowing everywhere. Y'all have seen me fight saran wrap, tin foil, plastic wrap, but not today. But when you're sealing this, go ahead and leave your room when you're coming around the corners to mash this down in there. So when that lid gets there, it's not gonna tear that foil. But look where this bale is. You gotta have it to where you can get to it because you're gonna need that when it's time to come out of the hole. When you get your lid on there, just give it a turn just to make sure it's sealed down in there. We have about this many coals in the bottom, good hardwood. We're using some mesquite and some fogo and a little oak, whatever we had left over. Make sure it is a hardwood. Goes in the hole. Make sure that if you can, you find a half level spot somewhere. You can see it's setting pretty level it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and get us some more coals. Put a few around the edge. You see we left this hole big enough that we could actually get some coals around the outside edge of this. That's going to help us keep a pretty even cook time. When you cover this with tin foil, cover it with dirt, what have you done? You have shut off the oxygen. So what heat you're maintaining in there is actually what is cooking this device right here. So tin foil on the top, just get her, we just wanna get it sealed up tight. We gotta cover the top of that dirt with some coals. That way if there's any moisture there, we're just keeping that locked in, get that heat right there. We're gonna keep that on top. But hey Houston, yes, what time is it brother? Folks, we're going to shoot for about 12 o'clock and hope that this is done. We'll find out when we pull it out of the hole, so don't leave us now. Still here anyway. Is it hot? Can't... Uh, Pretty hot? Well, it's not as hot as I'd like it, but. Think it's good? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's above 100. Four hours, well, three hours and a little change because we put it on 9.30, Houston, nine. nine. So we're about three hours in. You never know, this is like we call surprise cooking, it is. So we got her out of the hole, make sure that you get all the coals off the top of there before you even to attempt to drag this out. And um, we'll see. Are you nervous? Well, a little bit, because used to doing this with really good, big hearty chunks of mesquite. So three hours is what I would cook it in the house if I was cooking it. So we'll get rid of that. Now you see this foil when it's on here, don't just go to ripping that off because you're gonna dump some of that ash in there. If you can just pull it all to one, one side and hope I'm that- I'm afraid you're gonna open it, it's gonna be a chicken in there. A chicken? That'd be a good magic trick. Yeah. 
Yeah, it smells really, really good. It does? Mm-hmm. Smells like I'd eat it. So if we had a fork, and let's just say we was digging around in here, and we just rolled one of them up there where you could see it, and we... Oh. Not as tender as I'd like it, but it's pretty close. We pulled from the bone good. See, you can see it's not quite as tender as it should be. But if you come across this problem and you're doing this, when you get it to this point and you done dug it out of the hole, put that lid back on it, put it over here and put it on a slow simmer till you get that fork tender where it'll fall apart and you'll be fixed up. But I'm gonna take this over here, pull this off the bone, and we're gonna try as a bite. That broth out of there, mm, I could drink that stuff every day. Like I say, this is not quite as tender as I would like, but one thing I've always wanted to know is when you cook one right, the bone should come out, it should. So we'll lay him right in there. And, and remember too, when you're cooking this dish, there is so much flavor that's coming out of this bone marrow that's leaching back in there. Ooh, it is a good thing. So we're just gonna see if we can pull us a little bite off here. We'll just shred us a little down here. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Memories flood back into cooking with Julia Childs on this day and beef bourguignon in a way because the red wine that comes back in here to give you all that flavor. I guarantee you folks, you get you some rice or some mashed potatoes with this deal, pour that broth over there, you have got a meal fit for a king. So what's the flavor of a, the rib? Because I've never had one. To me, when you do a beef rib like this, it's a cross between really a really tender steak that you've cooked like a, in a mushroom gravy sort of deal, you know, like a sirloin or a big old thick chuck roast. But it's just blended so well together. But you can do this in a crock pot or you can do this in a conventional oven. Really, if I was gonna do this in the conventional oven, I'd probably go about 325 and I'd get me one of them enamel coated Dutch ovens that you can use because them things really hold in heat really well. Cook it 300 for probably three to three and a half hours. Everything's gonna fall apart so easy. If you're doing this in a crock pot, be sure and pour your beef broth and your wine in there before you ever start really because that's gonna let that warm up, turn it on high, so when you get these braised and put them in there, you're saving time. Now you could use this not only short ribs, chuck roast, pot roast, arm roast, any kind of roast you wanna throw in there, but this really works well with wild game too. If you have you a big old deer roast or an elk roast, you wanna just cut in there and set in there, but be sure you braise that first in that skillet to lock in all that flavor. Woo, I had me a good time today cooking this because it brought back such good memories of sitting around in there with Grandma and listening to Julia Childs cook. And we done really did. Did she dig a post hole? I don't think she knew what post hole diggers <laughs> were. Now, Justin Wilson might have, but yeah. I don't think she did, you know. And really, the post hole digging part was the only part I didn't enjoy in this video. We thank y'all for watching. We do. It is a great privilege to have you here, but also it is an honor and a privilege as I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag flying over camp. The rest of you, get on in here quick, because I ain't gonna wait. I'm not, I'm gonna give you a great big old hug. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the, I'm gonna dig a hole in the backyard trail. Can we just get a little Dutch oven, because that's about as deep as I can It's 45 minutes, you can't dig in a hole. Well, it's gonna take longer than that, about a, about a day and a half. We should have started the video with this and then we could have just brought in the backhoe to finish it off. <laughs> <laughs>